We're going. Welcome back, folks, to Thursday night from live from the view. I mean, this is actually going to be a one for the books. This one's live from everywhere on the west side of Nash Vegas. Uh, we are bringing you the, the art of the barbecue this evening. We've been working on this show for a long time. I'll tell you what, this has been one of the most fun shows put together. We're excited about it. The Community Arts of Bellevue has worked hard on trying to pull this show together. So here's what you got. You've got Lee Jones. Lee is at Tailgate Brewery with Edie. Uh, <laughs> and they're going to talk about uh, what all is going on over there. I'm out actually in Fairview, Tennessee. Uh, you can't really see this yet. Maybe you can. Um, I mean, it's absolutely beautiful out here at the Whiskey Fire Smokehouse trailer that is astounding. I'm going to, I want to see if I can change cameras really fast so I can show you what's going on here. So here we are at the Whiskey Fire uh, Smokehouse trailer and uh, smoker. And I'm just going to do a quick pan because it is absolutely stunning out here. Beautiful houses. Uh, we got Brian Everett that we're going to be interviewing, and this is actually his home that's right behind me. Absolutely beautiful. And then if you'll um, uh, at... Um, We're out in Bellevue. We lost Glenn. For us tonight, so um, just hang tight. You're gonna have a magnificent show. Um, we promise this be entertaining. It'll be funny if nothing else, uh, which is what we strive for. So, um, <laughs> because of our situation, and, and Brian is still working the trailer, and he at seven or a little bit later, he's gonna shut down and come over and join us. And so, if you don't mind, Lee, can I kick this over to you? So, I doing so, so, we come out here all the time. This is my dog, Little Amy, and she is in the mud club, which I'm trying to show her bandana. She gets a little scarf that says mud club on it, tailgate mud club, and then she gets a homemade treat that they make in their bakery here. So, she'll hold that, she'll take that and hold on to it for about 30 minutes, or, or maybe so. Started out not having that, but now they do. So uh, 
there's something for everybody out here. And uh, I was going to go through these beers and stop by and get a growler uh, to take home and have a good barbecue. You can buy a can cans, and or you can sit and order they have a craft pizza as well, which is really, really good. So we're going to sit out here and we're going to taste our drinks and we'll be back and uh, let you know how it goes and check back in with Edie and we can go to Lynn or uh, Elaine and Renee. Take it away. Hi, we're making a, some desserts for the 4th of July here. Are you all ready for me now to start putting it together? I think so, Renee, if you want okay. to, if you're ready. Sure. I wanted to pick something that was very light, very quick to make. This is one of my favorite recipes. I don't know if you have had mascarpone cheese before. This is from our local Kroger. If you are a fan of tiramisu, you have had mascarpone cheese because that is what is on top of the ladyfinger sponge cake is tiramisu that's flavored with Kahlua, a little coffee liqueur. It is an Italian cheese. Think cream cheese, but richer, creamier, and a little tangier. Very delicious. Very nice mouthfeel. Tastes wonderful and it feels wonderful while you're eating it. I'm gonna do a little twist on it though. We're gonna do a summer tiramisu. I'm taking some, this is um, a cup of mascarpone cheese that's been sitting out at room temperature. If you take it straight from the fridge, it's, it will be too cold to work with, too hard to work with. Ingredient number one, mascarpone cheese. Ingredient number two, very simple, if you own a zester, we're just gonna take the zest of half an orange for one cup of mascarpone. If you've never used a zester before, what we're doing is we're taking the outer peel off of the orange only. We don't wanna go deep into the white part of it, it'll get bitter. So what you wanna do is take the zester across the orange and just peel the little strips off. I'm not going to do this whole thing. It's not that interesting to watch. So let's say you have half the orange peeled. Take your knife. You just dice it up very fine. You don't cut your fingers off. You keep your fingers curled under. And magically, I already have it here in a cup done. Um, this is, comes to about a teaspoon and a half of... of uh, orange zest. I'm going to put that in with the mascarpone. This is six tablespoons of sugar, which I've already sifted. So that's ingredient number three. Number one, mascarpone cheese, room temperature, zest of half an orange, which comes to about a teaspoon and a half of orange zest. What gives it a nice little kick here is two tablespoons of frangelico, hazelnut liqueur, uh, if Frangelico is the top notch, but you can also just buy a hazelnut liqueur, uh, maybe a little bit less money than the Frangelico. Very simple, four ingredients. And now, I'm just going to stir it together. Thing with this, if you're going to have company in the afternoon, you want to do this in the morning because the sugar will dissolve. Otherwise, it'll be a little grainy. I don't know if you can see this. That, that's pretty much all there is to this recipe. If you have a KitchenAid mixer, you can do it there. This is a recipe you can double, quadruple, depending on how many people you're going to have. This one cup serves, I would say, probably six people. So if you're going to have more than that, you might want to get two containers of mascarpone cheese. That's it. That's basically the entire recipe. Now, the, the beauty of this is that it's very versatile. I've taken, this is the summer tiramisu. I made an almond sponge cake. You brush it with a little 
uh, syrup, which is simple syrup, which is equal parts sugar and water and a little bit of hazelnut liqueur. You just brush it on your cake. You can do any cake, plain sponge cake, pound cake, berries, and the mascarpone cheese on top. These are little uh, cup, phyllo cups. They're already pre-baked. All you have to do is pop them in the oven a little bit to put some crunch on them. I filled them with berries and a little dab of mascarpone cheese on top. Very simple. If you're having a buffet, very nice thing to put out. If you're doing a seated dinner party, take your favorite kind of cake. Once again, this is an almond sponge cake. And I'm, hopefully we'll be able to put the recipe on the Facebook page for the arts community. And uh, mixed berries, mascarpone. Goes really nice with some pistachio nuts. Just chop up some pistachio nuts. It goes really well together. Another alternative. Last alternative. Oh, here's another one. In the morning, waffles. Waffles and mascarpone. Goes with everything. Uh, last, last option would be if you want to do something very simple, you want to put it out, let your guests help themselves. Fill a cup. There you go. You can put it in a pastry bag. It looks pretty that way. Or just spoon it into the cup. Put berries on the side. And your guests are welcome to take some berries, spoon some mascarpone cream on their plate, and use it as a dip. So that's uh, one recipe with only four ingredients. A cup of mascarpone, six tablespoons of sugar, uh, two tablespoons of hazelnut liqueur for Angelico, and a zest of a half an orange, about a teaspoon and a half of orange zest. You let the mascarpone sit out a little bit at, to soften it, not too long, just a little bit to, to take the, some of the chill off of it, and you have a really nice flavorful cream that's a little, a little bit more unusual than just serving berries and whipped cream. So that's the world of mascarpone. Thank you. Oh, one last thing. If you are looking for blackberries, our community garden, Bell Garden, you can pick your own blackberries or you can buy them. It, it's right across from the new firehouse behind the Bellevue Middle School, Bell Garden. Best blackberries that you will find in Bellevue. And the Bell stands for the Bellevue Edible Learning Laboratories because yes. it was created for the uh, Bellevue Middle School students to go out and learn from. And it's just an absolute remarkable resource out there in Bellevue that the Exchange Club helped put together. Renee, thank you so much. That was thank absolutely you. stunning. I can't wait to taste that. Come on over. I'm a mascarpone freak, so you may not yeah. get rid oh, of I me. I love it too. I love it. And uh, it, I, I'm sure you mentioned it earlier is that uh, Renee used to be the uh, pastry chef at the, the Tin Angel, which is which was one of my most absolute favorite restaurants in Nashville for many, many, many years. So, um, so we're back live in Fairview at the Whiskey Fire Smokehouse Grill. Um, we're, this is just fabulous. I, I'm going to once more kind of turn my camera around if I don't do this without killing the whole shebang. Well, you know what? It helps if I hit the right camera. So I want to give y'all a quick, brief view of of Brian's setup here. It's uh, quite the thing, quite a beautiful trailer smoking unit and restaurant that he's got going on here. You can see his logos set up. And then look back here. Here's the smokers. Here's where the real magic all happens is back here. Um, we're going to talk to him more tonight about this setup and about what he's doing with this and how he got here. Um, here we all are. Matt is out here with us tonight helping us run the show and Brian. And so we're just excited to be out in Fairview. We're, this has always been a place where we love to expand our shows to. So this is a perfect example of it. So Matt or Brian, please have a seat. Let's, let's chat a little bit. Even though the rain happened, folks, we didn't let that deter us. We came on out here anyway. So um, I'm going to introduce you guys to, to Brian. Brian is the owner of this establishment. 
Brian? Nice to meet you. <laughs> yeah. Glad to excuse me, have you with us this evening. We're Absolutely. really excited about this. So um, tell us about Whiskey Fire Smoker and how we got started with, with your business. Well, man, you know, once the <laughs> pandemic hit last year, um, I, I was in video production for 25 years and all the events stopped. Everything stopped. And um, I was waiting for a couple months and still nothing picked back up. And I was just like, okay, I don't know how long this is going to last. And uh, I've been smoking meat. <laughs> You know, I've been smoking for friends and family for seven years and, and I love doing it. And, and I've always wanted to open a restaurant, a barbecue mm -hmm. restaurant, and um, didn't quite have the funds to do that yet. So I decided, well, what's the next best thing? And that was a food truck, uh, something that, that Fairview really, really needed um, uh, out here. <laughs> they, they love their barbecue out here. Uh, <laughs> people love their brisket out here. And, uh, and so we're happy to be here and, and, you know, kind of share that. Yeah. That with everybody. What got you started in the barbecue business? You know, I, I started out, uh, honestly eating at Salt Lick in Austin, Texas, oh, uh, wow. outside of Austin, Texas. Okay. And, uh, I, I love that place. I love their food. And, um, and that, that's kind of what got me, got me going. Okay. Um, and, uh. And so I just started filling with recipes and rubs and making my own, my own stuff. And, and it was a lot of trial and error at first. Um, uh, but you know, I got to the point where I was like, okay, this is pretty good. Yeah. And, uh, let me see if I can take it to the next step. And, and so here we are and, and people seem to be uh, responding well to it and coming back. And, yeah. It looks and, like it. Yeah. That's yeah. great. So tell about your smoker. How did you come upon this, Man, so the smoker, this monster? Yeah. So, uh, the smoker, uh, came from Texas. It was built in Texas okay. uh, by a, a place called Bison Smokers, and uh, it's just a, an old propane tank. It's an offset smoker, and uh, oh, they wow. they have converted propane tanks into smokers. And um, I knew that's what I wanted, and and so I commissioned uh, uh, Bison Smokers to to build it for me. It's been it's custom built from the trailer you know, to the smoker. They brought it up and delivered it to me, and. Uh, uh, I love it. It's, it's producing some really, really nice meat. Okay. So, yeah. What do you use for your heat source? With uh, so most most of our wood is hickory. Okay. Um, probably 90% is hickory. Um, we use about 10% oak. Um, we use more oak in the winter just to help keep things a little warmer. Um, oak burns hot. And uh, so we use less and less oak now. Okay. Um, but it's it's mostly hickory. Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah. And it's probably have good supply of that around here oh, as yeah. well yeah so we, we get all of our wood local we try to support local um, good that's great you know uh, it, it's one of our things where we want to give back to the community so we buy we source all of our, our all of our fuel and all of our wood local nice so, yeah nice so how much meat can you do at one time with this monster you know have you named it does it have a name <laughs> we call we, it lily or something we, we call it ironwood <laughs> yeah we call it ironwood um but uh you know, we smoke we smoke pork butts, we smoke brisket, we smoke ribs, and a lot of times we're doing all three at once. And so we've never really calculated, you know, how many briskets we could fit on there or how many pork butts, but uh, we could probably fit 20 to 24 briskets on there. Um, you know, probably a good 40 pork butts on there. Well, yeah, a lot of meat. It's a lot of meat. <laughs> yeah. Y'all take orders for folks? Uh, we do. We do some catering. Uh, we do some uh, private events, uh, weddings, things like that. And so in those cases, you know, we, we try to have a seven to 10 day lead time on an event so that we can prepare for it and make sure that we have the capacity and the bandwidth to do it. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, we it takes just a little bit of planning. Huh? It takes a little bit of planning. It I'm does. Sure. It does. And right now we're, we're planning for an event this weekend. Um, we're going to do, uh, we're going to be at city hall in Fairview for their annual 4th of July show. We were just talking about the fireworks on the way yeah, down yeah. here this evening. That's, I was like, that's going to be, just uh, not even thought about that. That's going to be this Saturday from, yep. from three till, till fireworks go off. So we may have to come down and take, take part of that. that idea would be awesome. They're expecting a great turnout. And, I'm uh, sure. Yeah. I hope it's going to be really well. That's fun. That's fun. I know when I graduated from college at whatever point that was. I served barbecue throughout the, for the for my uh, my graduation party and yeah. everything. It was the best. Everyone just loved it and had fun. And so, who doesn't love barbecue? Oh yeah, absolutely. Who doesn't love barbecue? Absolutely. I grew up on it myself. So I'm from Southern Kentucky, so okay. I I grew up in Kansas, and so I, I 
was born and raised in Kansas. I live in Austin, Texas, so I've been around. Mm, gosh, awesome. various what a great city. Barbecue. What a great city. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Great place. Um, so you have any Memphis things going on here, or is it all? Not really. You know, we, we're kind of doing our own thing, you know? It's like uh, nothing's really super traditional. Um, um, we try to use a lot of old flavors, a lot of, a lot of uh, heavy seasoning on some, on some things that, okay. you know, it's we're not playing it safe here, you know, at all. Uh, so we're we're trying to throw some good flavors in there. That's great. Yeah. Have you kind of have you come up with a name for your style yet? No, you... I haven't. Okay, maybe we'll, we'll let somebody we'll help you work we'll on let that too. Name. <laughs> <laughs> I brought some marketing people oh, with great, me tonight, great. so we can help work on that. We're, you know, that's kind of the thing where we're, we're kind of like working out with community arts development. It's like, yeah, there's an art spot to this community. We just have to figure out what it is. How do we how do you describe it? I work at food and stuff like this and be part of that same type of yeah. job, you know? Yeah, and I love those. Um, I, I lived there for 25 years before I relocated out here to Fairview, and so I'm I'm deeply rooted in Bellevue, and I'm so glad to have you guys out here. Yeah. Well, you know, we're kind of, we kind of call ourselves more of a organization that serves the, like the Harper River Valley yeah. region, so we yeah. really do kind of self-claim uh, Pegram and Fairview and Kingston as part of our is our own community as well. Okay, we're all, we're all out here together in the yeah in the west side, all alone. Nobody else uh, right. cares, you know. And, stuff. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, it's 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 beautiful out here. And I mean, in this setting, it's absolutely just gorgeous. Just it's, it's beautiful. beautiful out here. It's good. It's good. You're right next to the park. Yeah, yeah. And it's, that's beautiful. Uh, what are you about three, four miles away from Montgomery Bell? Yeah, I don't know the exact distance, but it's not far. And then, and then Bowie Nature Park's out here too, um, which, which is, very few people know. Yeah, it's it's a great nature park to go to, and just see a lot of great stuff. They're building a park there, and so new playground. Oh, yeah, well, that's cool. Yeah. Come out and take a look at all that as well. Yeah. So we've also ordered some food tonight. We were uh, like uh, introduced to all of you. Like we're we're going to get to taste. You don't get to do so. But that's, I'm, I'm sorry about that. But, <laughs> no. but you. Just guess what? Get in your car, drive to Fairview, and you can all have a taste of this yourself as well. So we're going to open up some of these beautiful boxes. We're going to, and uh, Brian's going to kind of tell us what we got going on here. Uh, Maraud! All right, so you're going to have to unwrap that, but um, this is uh, our smokehouse sampler, so if you're oh, undecided wow. and not sure um, what to order on the menu, uh, this comes with a, a taco, a slider, and then our signature item, which is the brisket bomb. And uh, the brisket bomb is a, a flour tortilla that's stuffed with brisket and cheese, corn and beans. Uh, it's got some poblano red peppers in it, and then we deep fry it. And so it's it's definitely called the bomb for a reason. So, yeah, no yeah. kidding. So this is Beautiful. our sampler. This is the sampler, and this is the cucumber. That is a cucumber wasabi. Wasabi that yeah. I was wanting to try out, which yeah. I'm like, I've already had it. That's outstanding. Super good with the brisket. That's bombs, lovely. Yeah. And then this is the chipotle aioli. Chipotle. I'm sticking my fingers in. That's <laughs> all right. You stick the food in there. Oh, wow. That's nice. Yeah. Beautiful sauce. Great sauces. Wonderful. Okay. And Matt and I are going to dig into these in a moment. Yeah. So, what else we got going on here? We got some more bombs. That's our uh, two bombs with a side meal. And so, it's two brisket bombs, and you get a side, and it looks like you got some mac and cheese. In mac and cheese. Yeah. Yes. That we got going on here. So these are kind of like chimichangas with a kick. They are, you know, they, <laughs> For the they really, kick. really are. Yeah, yeah. They're beautiful. I can't wait. I can't what else wait. We got? Let's see what else we did here. Oh, I think we got the... We got more tacos. Three, four tacos there. We got the there. three, four tacos. Yeah, and our tacos come with uh, black bean and corn salad. Yeah, look at this. And some pico. And, oh, my uh, God, that's beautiful. And you've got the black bean corn salad side. Yeah. Absolutely pretty. Beautiful food. Well, thank you. Tell me more about what else you have on the menu. I know there's yeah, quite a bit so more. We didn't get a chance to order. We tonight. didn't. Uh, uh, we sold out of brisket today, so our sliced and chopped brisket was gone, and so you didn't get to try that. But um, um, that's definitely a big, big menu item. Um, our ribs are amazing. Um, we we do baby back ribs, and they're they're at least three pounds. They're big and meaty. Uh, we use our signature bomb and, and bomb sauce on that. Um, and, uh, so, yeah, I mean, you can't go wrong with any of it. Uh, some of my favorites are, are the brisket and the ribs. Nice. So, uh, 
So how long does it take you? To, how long do you usually smoke on brisket? Our briskets we smoke for anywhere from 12 to 14 hours, probably. Just depends on the size of the brisket. Um, we're getting a lot of different sizes these days with, with all the issues with meat supply and everything mm -hmm. else. And so we might get a 13 pound brisket, we might get a 21 pound brisket. And so we just kind of kind of got to gauge it and, and cook it till it's done. You know, you can't yep. rush it. So. Right, yeah. right. So do you locally source your meats as well, or is that, do you have a uh, We don't locally source those. For that? Yeah, we, we, we use a uh, food supplier for all of our meat supply. Um, and uh, uh, we use performance food group. Uh, which okay. Is sure. yep. Cisco or something like that. Yep. And uh, they carry all the top brands just like any other supplier does. Good. So, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Um, so where, where do you go from here? Man, you know, that's a good question. Everybody <laughs> seems everybody seems to want us to open a restaurant now. And uh, they, that's like the number one question is, are you going to open a, a brick and mortar? And uh, um, we're not sure yet. You okay. know, we don't really know. We've only, we've only been open out here since November of last year. And uh, so we'd like to get through the first year and just kind of, you know. Oh, sure. Uh, yeah. Things out and sure. Just I'm scared, out yeah. But, yeah. But we've had great response for we're selling out often, and so not um, many people can say they open in the middle of a pandemic. No, you know, very yeah, that few. was a little scary, a little scary. I'll be honest with you, but at the same time, I think um, we kind of called for it too. You know, uh, with with all the restrictions that were going on at the time, uh, having a place that you could come and order online and just pick it up was kind of the thing to do at the time. And yeah, so, yeah, so it worked out. Isn't that great? Love that. That's yeah. a, that's I like success stories like that <laughs> in the middle of everything. So it's been a it's been a challenging year, especially in, for us as well. So we're uh, we're certainly glad to be on the backside of everything and coming back into life as normal. But uh, yeah, it's good yeah. stuff. Um, anything else you'd like to share with the folks about your business and about the smoke fire, the whiskey fire, the whiskey fire? You know. Um... I don't know. Just come out and try us. You know, we, we get a lot of new people every day, and we Tell have people how to get here. Of repeat customers. So we're we're right off uh, Highway 96 in Fairview. If you're uh, headed towards Memphis on 40, you turn left on 96, and you go about a mile and a half down, and we're right on the corner of 96 and Northwest Highway. Um, lots of traffic. Can't miss us. Um, you'll definitely see us. You'll see the smokestack, and you'll smell it. Yeah, really. Yeah. Come around the corner and you be, you'll see the trailer. Yes, mm -hmm. and it's it's beautiful. Um, I'm going to check back in with Lee. I think she said that she could come back up and okay. uh, do some more as well. Um, give me just a moment. Oh, we got to hold, please, while Matt <laughs> goes out and grabs another camera to bring some more people back in uh, and give uh, Lee a moment to uh, say what's going on. Lee, are you there? Lee, I'm afraid to touch anything, Matt. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna take me out. No, now I got it. There's Lee. She's ready to go. Lee, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay.
Yeah. Oh. So come out and tell me and grab some beer or water to this morning. Hey Lee, we're having a little bit of difficulty hearing you. Can you may have to pick up your mic. To help any. Still not hearing you. Go, go, take off your uh, unplug and go straight to your phone with your mic. See what happens. Unplug your phone, your your plugs. Uh oh. Well, that's what happens when you're live on a show and you tell Lee to unplug. <laughs> you lose the whole thing. Uh, at least you got me, right? So that's how that goes. Um, we, Matt and I are chowing down on the barbecue out here, uh, and it's absolutely fantastic. Um, I mean, over the top fantastic. This is delicious. And he's uh, Brian has now gone to put us a cobbler into the um, into the oven to warm it up for us. So we're going to do a, a blackberry cobbler that's also... Can you hear me now with it? Yes, that's perfect. Thank you. Yes? Okay. Oh, Good. I don't have my headphones in now, so I can't hear you. But um, I'll go over what I have said before. Um, Take me out, I'm Matt. I'm out here at Tailgate. Come by, get some beer to go with your barbecue and to go with the uh, mascarpone cheese that Renee made us, which I'm making this weekend. And uh, I wanted to reiterate to you to let Brian know that I've been to, uh, haven't been to Salt Lake, but I've had Salt Lake barbecue. I have a friend in Birmingham that actually orders it from there to his house. He's from Texas and he loves Salt Lake. So, but uh, the four beers I tasted were four different beers. There was a Gosa, which is a coriander salt beer. There's a lime lager, which is your normal lager, like your uh, Bud Light, Miller Light, Coors Light. Um, they have several hazy IPAs, and then uh, they have beers called Snacks, which are fruity beers. Um, I'm having one called Oatmeal Raisin, and if you, if you take a sniff of it, it smells just like Oatmeal Raisin. So if you're out, if you fa have family in this weekend, or you don't have anything else to do, come out. This is a kid-friendly place. There's lots of kids everywhere. Um, and dogs. It's Edie in her mud puddle. She got in a mud puddle earlier. So uh, bring the dogs, bring the family, come out, hang out. There's picnic tables. There's places on the grass to sit. Um, you can order. They have craft pizza. They have uh, baked wings, all kinds of food options um, after you've had barbecue. So that's it. Uh, come out and give Tailgate a, a try, and um, they'd love to have you. And we'll go back to you. Thanks. <laughs> so that's how we roll out on the west side. Uh, we do everything, you know, from barbecue to, you know, bring your puppies and your pets. And we do blackberry and mascarpone. We got it, we got it going on. So uh, that's going to be our show for this evening. We want to thank all of you for joining us and for being a part of the show. Um, this is kind of our fourth kicking off our July. Today is July 1, isn't it? Um, wow. The year is flying by quickly. So anyway, we want to thank all of you for joining us this evening. We're, we're, uh, we're here to, to, uh, to be part of this community, and we're glad to be doing so. We also want to let you know that there is going to be um, a huge um, September the 11th, 9-11 memorials uh, event that's going to be happening 9-11. Um, of this year. This is the 20th anniversary of 9 11. Um, and so there's going to be a big memorial event at Red Caboose Park on that day, which is going to be on a Saturday. Charlie Tiger and the Exchange, the Bellevue Exchange Club and groups have already started working on a massive program. 
Community Arts of Bellevue will be a big part of that as well. And so I just want to go ahead and let you start knowing about it, hearing about it, and start putting it on your calendar. You'll want to be there for that day. Um, that's it from Community Arts of Bellevue. So glad to have you with us this evening. We will see you next Thursday evening. And um, I hope you all have a really wonderful and safe 4th of July. And we're all back together again, which is remarkable and outstanding and joyful and hopeful. So just keep all the good work and we will see you all next Thursday evening from Live from the View, wherever that might be. Stay tuned. All right. Thanks, everyone. Have a good night.